Okay, so we um, developed this fantastic app in collaboration with Microsoft. Started that in uh, January 2017 with the Garage interns. Was then turned over to UBC. And since then, Murdad and Robin Choi and now Yana Fartels have been working on it. And um, one of the things that we wanted to see was, okay, so we can make this beautiful app, and it's really cool to see a holographic brain and to see it rotate and explode, and you can add nuclei and you can label them. But does it really change anything? Are we really helping students? Um, that was our big question. And that's what Parker Hallman and Tamara Bodnar uh, set out to do. So they were supported by a MyTax Accelerate grant, and they worked together with the uh, Microsoft interns to develop the app. They were really involved in sort of creating the pedagogical flow of, of this app. Um, we then took students here at UBC, divided them into two cohorts. Um, one cohort was taught neuroanatomy in the traditional way, and one cohort was taught with the HoloLens. Um, we looked at our groups. They were balanced for age, gender, uh, English, Ingu English language learner status. Um, and um, so we have very balanced groups. And we then wanted to see whether, you know, they did a pre-test pre and a post-test. Um, and the post-test consisted of two different domains. One of them was a multiple choice que uh, question test, and the other one was a lab bell ringer, where we would ask students to identify structures on actual brain specimens. And that's typical for us to do in all of our health professional programs, we'd have those types of bell ringers. And so um, when we then looked at the data, oops, we looked at it very quickly apparently, um, we found for the most part the hollow lens did no harm, which means that both groups learned the same. And then in some domains, the hollow lens group outperformed the traditional group. One of the domains that they outperformed, the augmented reality group outperformed the traditional group was on the bell ringer exam. And if you had asked me if I would have anticipated that, that would have been the last domain I would have anticipated a difference between the two groups. So that was quite, diff uh, quite interesting to see. You see there is a, just a section through the brain. This is how we do our bell ringers, put a pin in a structure and ask what is this, what does, what does this structure do, or, or something like that. So they were able to orient themselves better on the actual physical brain specimens when they had been trained with uh, the holographic app. Um, I'm not going to pretend to totally understand what that graph on the left means because I'm really, I still am at the level of the book Statistics Without Tears. And... Um, <laughs> Parker and Tammy are very good at statistics. They move beyond the tiers. And what they did is an analysis of the questions um, in, this, in this method. And they were able to see that the questions kind of divide into two components. And when they then looked at, you know, clustered those two components and looked at the differences between the traditional group and the HoloLens group, they found that in the second component, so the lower one here, the ones that scatter, let me see, the ones that scatter down here, that in that group, the HoloLens group, again, outperformed the traditional group. And what's interesting is that in that cluster of questions is where our MRI questions were. So the holographic brain app is um, reconstructed from MRI scans, and it has a feature where you can zoom through the brain to scans. And we really hoped that it would help students translate the three-dimensional image to a two-dimensional image. And it, as it happens, the questions that tested that were clustered in sort of that component where the hollow uh, lens group did better. So there's the statistics for that. We then looked at learning objectives. So we had several learning objectives that we linked to the questions. So both in our pre-test and our post-test, uh, we, after we had developed the exam, we went back. And all three of us, independent of each other, mapped the question to a learning objective. And that was before any data analysis began. Um, and we then, you know, it was for the most part, we mapped all the questions to the same learning objectives. There were a couple where, you know, it could have been one or the other. And we went back and decided on one final one that it would map to. When we then did the analysis to see if the students did differently related to those learning objectives, Learning objective number two, which for some reason shows up as number one on <laughs> this slide, um, here again the hologram group did better than the traditional group. So while I can't say that the holographic brain app is, has completely revolutionized uh, the impact on learning, um, it's not like they did vastly better across all domains, we were able to find that 
Well, across everything, there was no difference in groups except in very specific parts of uh, what we were testing. And those were the highlights that you, you saw there. Yeah, there you go. And that's, that's where it all started. <laughs>